Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome. I'm just uh, firing up my uh, PowerPoint presentation here, and then I will uh, get going. Uh, my name is uh, Thomas Johansson, and I am with the marketing department at uh, TAU World. There we go. Okay, sorry about the delay. I hope everybody can see my screen now. So as I mentioned, my name is Thomas Johansson and I am with the uh, marketing department at uh, TAU World. Thank you everybody for tuning in. I think we have a very good turnout here today. So I'm very happy about that. And thank you to everybody for taking the time. Thank you to our faculty uh, for being here uh, as well. Uh, we all know that this is a, a trying time. So we are very happy that we're able to connect everybody. Uh, and let you know uh, all the amazing resources that uh, TAU have uh, brought out and the amazing efforts that our faculty has put into uh, changing the way that they uh, deliver material uh, to students at uh, Thompson Rivers University. Uh, so we're gonna talk a little bit about that uh, when we get uh, into the presentation. So it's predominantly gonna be about teaching and academics at TAU. So if you do have questions regarding uh, visa, application process, uh, financial matters, and so on. Uh, this might not be the right uh, forum for that. Uh, if you do have application-related questions, uh, please uh, direct that to uh, international admission, either at iapply at tiu.ca for undergraduate-related concerns, or igrad at tiu.ca for uh, graduate-related concerns, or any other general inquiry can go to uh, welcome at tau.ca and we'll get to it uh, as quick as we can. Uh, so as I mentioned, we have faculty with us here today and I'll be happy to introduce uh, Dr. Fahim Ahmed, uh, Acting Dean of Science, Dr. Musfiq Rahman, Associate Professor and Program Coordinator, and Mark uh, Paktu, uh, Associate Teaching Professor uh, with the Faculty of Science. Um, so before we get any further here, I'd like to turn it over to our panelists to do a quick introduction and a short message to the students. Uh, Fahim, would you go first? Oh. Well, hi, my name is Dr. Fahim Ahmed and I'm the Acting Dean of Science. On the behalf of my colleagues uh, in Faculty of Science, I want to say you a very warm welcome to this session. And uh, I'm pretty hopeful that uh, we will be able to answer uh, many of your questions and if any of the question remains an answer we'll try our best to find an answer and we'll get back to you thank you fantastic thank you uh, mark will you do you want to go next sure my name is uh, mark Petko, and i uh, teach in the department of physics uh, you'll know my title is associate teaching professor so my main role is teaching i do a little bit of research but my focus is teaching and uh, I do whatever I can to help uh, my students get through their courses and enjoy their studies and find their passion. Thank you. Musfiq? Hi, everybody. My name is Musfiq Rahman, and I'm an associate professor and the program coordinator for the computer science department here at Theory. Um, I do uh, research and teaching is, is my passion. Um, so if you have any questions related to uh, in general uh, teaching and some of the projects that we do uh, in related to computer science, definitely we would be able to uh, answer those questions. And in general, any, any sort of uh, question related to how the, how the teaching would be conducted during this kind of time. So we would be definitely delighted to answer those questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, now we have a quad, uh, short uh, video here to play from Dr. Fahim Ahmed. Uh, it will be on here in just a quick second. Hello, I am Dr. Fahim Ahmed, Acting Dean of Science here at Thompson Rivers University. On behalf of my colleagues in the Faculty of Science, I hope you and your families are safe and doing well. I want to welcome you to this session today and we are looking forward to see you joining TIU in the fall term. I want to ensure you that your safety comes above everything else. The experience that you are going to have in fall 2020 will be different and gives you an opportunity to gain lifelong learning skills 
which many employers also want in their employees. Over the summer, with the help of instructional designers, specialists in our center of teaching and learning, and drawing on everything that we learn during the winter semester, we are working to make every TRU course effective and learner focused. Your faculty will be available to you to help you in making a transition to this learning mode and will hold a regular virtual office hours to have on one-on-one -on -one interaction. Thanks to each of you for joining today and I'm sure that we will get this through together. And I want to ensure you that my faculty and staff will make all possible efforts to make this transition and experience enjoyable and memorable for you. Thank you. Thank you uh, very much. Uh, that was a great, a great message to share there. Yes, obviously everybody has to stay safe, but we also have to uh, have to get on with life. So uh, I know everybody has a ton of uh, questions. Um, so we have a number of uh, of uh, questions that we have uh, preset here, which are regular questions that we receive from students a lot uh, over the last little bit here. So we will uh, work on those uh, to begin with, and then. Uh, we will open it up uh, using the Q and A, uh, which you should have available in your in your Zoom setup, uh, and we can take additional questions, uh, time permitting. Uh, so uh, let's jump in with uh, questions number one, question number one here. Uh, can you please clarify which courses will be delivered virtually or face to face? or blended. So this is something we have received a lot of because this is obviously very important uh, for students whether or not they can be studying from back home or they have to be on TAU uh, campus. So, who, who would be uh, who would be most inclined to, to answer this? Mark? Uh, so I, I can speak for the physics department. Uh, our uh, courses are going to be delivered in a, uh, a blended version. We're certainly aware that some students will be in different time zones, and so we will make sure that uh, uh, everything will be available to them. One of the things we find very important for first-year students is to have a schedule. So we're going to keep uh, to a schedule. We're going to try and organize your weeks as best we can so that you don't have surprises. You're not wondering what's coming up. Uh, we're going to keep things very scheduled for you. Uh, because we find that helps uh, students stay focused. One of the things in, in first year uh, that you, in science that you will take are labs. And one of the concerns we have is that students uh, will spend too much time on the lab. And so we'll make sure that they're very structured so that you aren't spending too much time on a lab. We only want you to be there for uh, a set amount of time and we don't want you to be there longer because that isn't uh, a good use of your time. You've already got lots of courses and lots of other things going on. So those are the things that are on our minds when we do this. But uh, rest assured that we will, um, as uh, Dr. Ah Ahmed said, we will do everything we can to make sure that we get face-to-face -face time with our students, uh, no matter what time zone they're in. Thank you very much. Is there anybody else who would follow up with uh, any additional? Yes, Fahim, please. There you go. Okay. So on the behalf of Faculty of Science, uh, so I can say that all the first year science courses that includes physics, chemistry, math, biology, and uh, computer science, engineering, uh, all these programs, the first year courses are in the fall uh, in the virtual mode, and uh, which means that they're not face to face. And uh, when we say the virtually, uh, then the question comes up whether it's going to be synchronous uh, or asynchronous, which means that the, the student needs to be there on a fixed uh, specific uh, schedule or not. So most of the courses are in the blended kind of scenario, which means that there will definitely be a, a fixed schedule. Uh, and uh, once you come into the first week, the instructors will provide you more information uh, might be there might be one day which is uh, which is fixed at the schedule and the other days might be asynchronous. Uh, but once you have the first week, then the instructor will interact with you and will define an individual course how it will be run. Uh, 
uh, but all the first year science courses, they will be virtually uh, in, in the virtual mode. Fantastic. Uh, thank you very much. I think that uh, answers a lot of questions. Musfiq, do you have anything you want to follow up there or? Sure. Um, I could just add everything. I think uh, Mark and Fahim have already uh, covered most of the thing, but just to add with that, that uh, although uh, even if we have a set time, which is synchronous mode, we will record it and post it so that even if the student cannot attend at that time, they can actually view it later. So like, like the, this session, so it will be posted uh, for the student who cannot attend at that time, but they can view it at a later time. So they will have plenty of options to catch up. If, if they cannot attend at the set time, they can even uh, view it at a later time. Thank you. Fantastic, thank you. All right, let's jump to uh, question number two here. Um, so I, I think we're gonna cut this question in two here. We're gonna start with the two first parts here. Uh, why should I uh, study virtually and what are the advantages of virtual learning. So that would be kind of the first part. Uh, what will the online delivery look like? And can you describe what the virtual learning experience looks like? So let's take the first part. What, uh, why should they start in the September with uh, the virtual learning instead of waiting for whenever uh, campus classes are back on? And what, are the, what is the advantage of uh, virtual learning? Who can I uh, get to jump in on that one? Yeah, please, Fahim. So uh, I think the first thing is like, uh, we have to accept the reality in the world where we are living in. And uh, so right now the environment is that it is very difficult to conduct the courses face to face because of the health and safety issues. And, uh, and as I said earlier that uh, we'll, we'll do all of our possible efforts to ensure the health and safety of our students. So if that is the fundamental pillar, that's why uh, the, the courses are being moved into a virtual community. And uh, the question is that what are the advantages of virtual learning? So I think the world has been changed and, uh, and, 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 and it, it is a, like a kind of a continuous learning process even beyond once you finish your degree. And, and, and online or virtual learning is the mode in which once you are in your profession, you will be interacting with that and gaining the lifelong learning skills, uh, which enables you to, to, to go into a different learning mode where you can extract knowledge and update your professional knowledge and, and, and gain further uh, experience as well. So I think it's a nice opportunity and it's a, it's a, it's a perfect match with, with the current scenario uh, that uh, we will be moving into a virtual learning environment where you can gain certain skills which you may not be able to gain while you are in a face-to-face -face mode. So, and, and I hope pretty, ho pretty hopeful that this will be a short-lived uh, scenario and hopefully, like, uh, we will be in a mode sooner or later into a face-to-face -face domain. But let's get this time frame as a good opportunity to learn some skills, uh, which may, you may not be able in a face-to-face -face environment. Great. Thank you. Yes, I guess everybody has had to change to the, uh, the fact that you're working from home. The work life takes place at the, at the kitchen table and uh, not necessarily in the workplace. So I guess that's a, that's a good chance to to get into that mindset. Uh, what will this online delivery uh, look like? Uh, can anybody describe what this learning experience is like? Sure, um, I can jump in. Great. Okay, uh, so uh, we sort of uh, went into this as, as force because we didn't have any choice, but there are a lot of interesting aspects that came out of uh, open, like uh, online delivery. like. Typically, I would write it on, on, on my whiteboard and the student would write it on their, on their notes uh, during the class time. But now what I do, I take my iPad and I write it on the iPad so that all the students can see and then I can share that, my notes with the students. So they get a first-hand experience of getting these notes uh, from, from the instructor. Otherwise, they had to write it uh, on their notes. So this is one of, one of the advantage of uh, taking the class virtually. And the other advantage, as we mentioned, that uh, if, you, if you are rusty on, on a concept, if you miss something in, in the class, you can revisit it. You can view that at a later time and then understand that concept at, a, at, a, in, at your pace. Um, uh, at a later time. So those are really, really interesting uh, um, benefits that uh, you will get by uh, taking uh, the virtual, virtual learning 
And the other important thing uh, that we found that um, in, in the virtual learning, we can create a breakout group with the virtual student group and they can discuss uh, virtually among themselves uh, uh, on, a, on a specific topic. And that gives an interesting and better learning opportunity for the students. So there are, uh, although it's not intended, but there are many advantages of virtual <coughs> learning uh, um, that we, we, we found out. And, and uh, so far, uh, the experience for instructor and for the uh, uh, students are all pleasant and they all seem to like it, um, in, in, in my opinion. That, that's great. And I guess uh, you guys being, uh, being software people, uh, you guys are pretty maybe excited about this kind of teaching, seeing you can use your, your skills in the, in the classroom uh, a bit more. Uh, Mark, do you have anything to add uh, when it comes to uh, the learning experience? Yeah, for sure. So first of all, why should you study virtually? So one of the things I've noticed over the last few years is I have friends that are engineers. Uh, I have friends that work at the big companies like uh, Microsoft and that sort of thing. And most of the way their teams get together now is done virtually. They are doing uh, video meetings. They are working on software such as Slack, team sort of uh, group software. And so this is a great opportunity for you students to get that experience. And that's gonna be vital in, in the days as we move ahead here because work is now global and you're working with teams across the world. And this is, a, this is the first step for you to get experience in that kind of uh, collaboration. What are the advantages of virtual learning? First of all, the learning isn't virtual. The learning is real. So you students are gonna be learning uh, in a real sense. Uh, it's just the delivery that's gonna be virtual. Now, one of the things that, that I think is gonna be an advantage for you is that you, you will be able to stay at your home. You'll be get some support from uh, family members and friends at home. So you will have that support network, which is gonna be really important, uh, is really important in the first year. And I think that's gonna be an advantage for you uh, as coming into TRU to have that first year under your belt with some support. And then uh, hopefully we'll see you in 2021 and you'll be here in real person. We'll get to meet you face to face. But getting that first year with that extra support, I think is gonna be an awesome opportunity for you. And uh, what, uh, what's, what's the experience gonna look like? It's, it's gonna be different for sure. You're gonna learn some new skills. Uh, the instructors here are gonna make things uh, as positive for you as they possibly can. And we're here to support you, uh, helping you find what is important uh, and what really uh, sparks your passion. Thank you very much. Let me jump on to uh, question number three here. Uh, and I think we've touched on it a, a little bit already, but maybe we can, can elaborate on it because we have students uh, all over the world who might not, uh, uh, might have a hard time uh, being on when uh, it's daytime in Canada. So what is the difference between synchronized and asynchronized delivery? And what if I missed uh, the live lecture portion? Fahim, can I uh, invite you to uh, jump in on this one? Yeah. Yeah, so I think uh, what the difference between synchronized and asynchronized is the synchronized means that there is a fixed schedule and the instructor will deliver the lecture during that uh, period of time. And uh, whereas an asynchronous uh, means that uh, the, there is no fixed schedule and uh, the instructor will post uh, the lecture in the form of a video and then uh, the students can catch up the things from there. And, uh, but uh, most of our courses will be a combination of that synchronous and asynchronous. Uh, and as what Mushfiq said as well earlier, uh, that even if it is in the synchronous mode, which means that there is a specified time period when, uh, when the lecture will be delivered, but at the same time, the instructor will be recording that lecture as well. And once, you, once he or she finished the lecture, uh, that lecture will be uploaded uh, into the Moodle or the tool that they are using. And those students who might not be able to catch up the lecture at that time will be able to download that uh, video and go through with that in the next class when they have the opportunity or by having uh, the virtual office hours of the instructor, they have an opportunity to interact with the students and catch up the things. So great. Great. Yeah. So I imagine that's something uh, students will be asking about too is, is how do you interact with your professors? So, uh, virtual office hours, uh, how, how would that work? Is that a face-to-face -face meetings over Zoom or, or what, is the, what is the way of interaction there, Mark, can I? 
Yeah, for sure. I will have scheduled office hours, but as uh, as normal, I am basically, if I'm not in a class, I am free to discuss things with students. So I will have a, a set up sort of a, a video a chat room and uh, basically uh, students can contact me and say, hey, I'd like to meet you at this time uh, and we can sort out a time and I will meet them. And uh, that will be basically, I'll, I'll uh, any time of the day essentially will, will work for me, so. Terrific. All right, I see what we got next here. Uh, a little bit about how do I register for courses here and uh, what is the course schedule like? Uh, Musfiq, do you wanna talk a little bit about this one? Perfect. Okay. All right. So, um, yes, uh, I mean, the students for the first year student, typically they will have a set number of courses uh, and um, uh, the student advisors, uh, typically they would, they would go through uh, uh, with, the, with the student that what are the courses they would uh, register and they would help them uh, how to register for these courses. So the student doesn't have to worry at all uh, for how to register for the courses at the first year because these are these are fixed uh, number of courses and 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 um, and um, the schedules are uh, flexible because we offer different sections at different times so the student would have different choices to register different courses so I don't think that there would be any issue with the student they can directly consult with the uh, uh, in international advisors that we have to mm -hmm. support uh, the students. For yeah, sure. Thank you. I think that 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 hit it right on the on the head there. So I'm just going to jump forward here. Um, what kind of support is the faculty offering uh, for students studying uh, virtually? So we talked a little bit about the uh, uh, the ability to come uh, meet uh, their uh, lecturer. Uh, what else is there in place to help a, a student? Can I jump in first? For sure. Yeah, so uh, the student can definitely, first of all, if it is uh, synchronous mode, so the student can um, uh, basically attend the class, ask the question, so this is a direct uh, um, uh, way of communication with the faculty, but uh, after the class, there are many different ways the student can uh, communicate with the faculty as well as with the class. Typically what we create, we create a forum for the students. So uh, all the students in the class, they can discuss about topics, and ask different questions because many students may have the same question. So if we if we have a virtual forum and if the faculty answers the question of one student, that would answer questions of many students. So that is one way. And the other way it did direct uh, uh, like virtual hours for the faculty. Uh, it's a one-to-one -one communication. So uh, the faculty is available uh, with uh, to answer any concern or any question uh, the student might have and finally the email answer so if 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 the if a student miss all of these they can email it to the faculty and the faculty will try to answer those uh, via email thank you perfect thanks yeah and, and i think uh, like uh, every course will have the same as class work and the assignments and, and the quiz and the midterm and the final exam as well uh, so although like uh, the delivery of those things will be different in the sense that uh, you might need to upload your answers uh, in a specific mode or in a specific file format. Uh, and let's say if this is an assignment, so there's been a time duration is being given to that. And then you upload your assignment, the faculty will review the assignment and will provide you the feedback. So it's almost a similar kind of activity when you do a face to face, but it will be in a virtual mode. And, and, and if the faculty thinks that he or she needs to have a one-on-one -on -one interaction with you about any assignment or any quiz, he or she will definitely contact you to provide you more feedback on one-on-one -on -one as well. Otherwise, there is a generic feedback that is coming from the faculty as well. I just like to jump in there as well. I think one of the things that I'm certainly doing in my courses, I'm gonna work uh, extra hard to connect the students. So one of the things that's very important when you are studying is that you have uh, friends in the class, you have students in the class that you can uh, talk with. 
and uh, work out problems with. And so I think building that sense of community is going to be a focus of my classes. And we'll work on that in the very uh, first uh, couple weeks of that class to make sure that everyone has a bit of a network uh, so that they all have um, some support within the class itself uh, mm -hmm. for going through the class. That's great. I don't know if you guys could talk about how, how would a student access libraries and textbooks and, and so on, seeing that they're not on campus, they can't go to, uh, can't go to the bookstore, can't drop in on the library. How, how, how does that work in these, in these days? Um, personally, I believe that uh, because we are aware of this situation as well. So most of the lecture notes and uh, the PowerPoint slides they are being prepared by the by the faculty members and it will be uploaded and students will have an access to that uh, although like uh, they are uh, like uh, an online box available as well and uh, it depends on which book the faculty is using but definitely will make an all possible efforts to ensure that the book that we are using it has an online version as well uh, so that students can easily buy it or can have a copy of it uh, so that's 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 what I think. That's terrific. Anybody uh, want to follow up on that, or think we got to come? Uh, uh, yeah, I think I think Fahim already answered that. But uh, just further to that, uh, sometimes if we use external resources, uh, we use some sort of open source uh, textbook and open source resources. And uh, uh, some occasions we forward the students or uh, to those uh, open source. Uh, resources and the student can read from there. Thank great, you. great, thank you. All right. Uh, so one thing students are obviously uh, very mindful of is how uh, will they be evaluated? How do you do uh, midterms and how do you do uh, final examinations? And uh, I don't know how much experience you have with did this just as yet, as we're still moving through the summer here, but uh, if anybody could elaborate a bit, that would be terrific. Okay. Uh, yeah, time can go first. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think the each course will definitely have midterm, final exams, and the rest of the other evaluation uh, activities. Uh, the probably uh, it depends on which course it is. Uh, let, let, for example, I taught a programming course last uh, winter, and in which uh, uh, the the final exam was the similar as it used to be in the classroom. Mm -hmm. uh, that the student needs to write the program on the computers and then submit it to uh, a, a, a Moodle site where I can see the solution. And so they went through with the same thing. Uh, there was a specific period of time for three hours uh, uh, window in which they need to uh, write the exam. Uh, each question comes one by one and uh, they finish the question, they upload the file, and then they move on to the next question. Uh, it, 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 but it depends, sometimes it depends on individual uh, courses as well. Some courses has a uh, like not a defined window. Uh, like uh, it's been given for three days, and it's a take home kind of an exam, and uh, the student uh, complete the exam and then upload the form. Depends on the individual course, but definitely there is a midterm and final exam or projects in each and every courses. I think the most more information will come through once you have the course, and the faculty will definitely brief you and we do the entire process that all the final more specifically so in, in that case it has, actually hasn't changed all that much it's uh, still conducted in the, in the same way that's that's very interesting uh, anybody else who has experience with conducting exams yeah i can i can jump in so we have amazing tools uh, with Moodle uh, that supports us to conduct this midterm and final exams remotely. So uh, what uh, in my course, what I did similar to uh, what Fahim described that we have a set time for three hours and we created some multiple choice question, some short answer question and some long answer question. So we have different types of question and these questions are uh, randomly generated for every student. So we have a database of questions and the student gets a random view uh, and uh, they can answer the question and uh, get uh, feedback uh, immediately if it is multiple choice question. Um, so what we do, we, we, before we go for the midterm or final exam, we do a mini sort of quiz 
so that they are familiar with the system and they know how to answer those questions. And then we, we show them, okay, how to do it in the midterm and final exam. So that sort of a way. So it didn't change the format is exactly same as a face-to-face, -face, but the way we conduct it through a, a software and virtually. Thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, let me jump to the, the next question here. Uh, so this is something we hear a lot. Uh, why should I plan to enroll in fall 2020 instead of uh, winter uh, 2021, uh, seeing that we don't quite know what winter 2021 will, will look like yet? Uh, but why kick it off in fall instead of uh, hold on and, uh, and wait to see what happens down the road? Um. I think I think uh, the most important thing is the university academic calendar is run from fall and winter as are considered as first year. And uh, most of the courses, when they are being designed, they design in the way that uh, the students take some courses in the fall, which becomes a kind of a prerequisite for the winter term, and then it keeps moving. So it is important uh, everybody to uh, the courses of course that they can. Uh, easily move into the winter courses. That's one option. But however, like I can s still say that some of the departments, they do offer each course every term. Uh, but we, we normally recommend students to start from the fall to catch up or align themselves with a regular academic uh, calendar. Perfect. Anybody else who would uh, who would want to elaborate on on that? If not, then we're gonna we're gonna jump to uh, to the questions from the participants. Musfiq, no, do you I, have? I, no, I know I don't have any anything to add. Terrific. Okay. Well, we'll open it uh, open it up. And let's see. Uh, let's see if we got, if I were to, so here we have a question uh, from Rand. If I were to change my studies uh, to the second term, will I be able to uh, follow up? Or I guess I, I'm imagining what he means is, can he keep up even though he's uh, moving his, uh, his first intake to, to January? And, and, uh, Sure, Rand. Yeah. You, yeah, you could, you could, you could do that. We, I think, I think you're better off to to, to start in the fall. Uh, in terms of uh, course progression, it's uh, the 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 whole degree and everything is sort of uh, premised on you starting in the fall. I think there's going to be more opportunities to build a connection in the fall, which will carry you through into the winter. So I think those would be two strong things. One, in terms of course offerings, and two, just uh, building connections early uh, is really important uh, for your study. So those would be two things I would suggest uh, to encourage you to uh, come this fall. Great. Uh, Sima Deepia has a question about uh, trial classes for fall 2020. Uh, so if I could just start out here, uh, there will be a number of uh, uh, workshops conducted over the summer here by uh, by TAU on how to ha acquire effective virtual study skills studying back home. So yes, there will be that. Uh, otherwise, I'm not sure if they, they will be able to sample classes uh, over the summer, but we will conduct these trial classes. Uh, uh, I'm going to jump to the next one here. How do I join classes uh, from a different time zone? Uh, so here again, we talked about synchronous and asynchronous. Um, so it will not uh, necessarily uh, be an issue, but the next question uh, is how do I join practical sessions, lab work uh, that maybe cannot be conducted uh, virtually? Does yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll jump in on that. So I know what the physics department is doing. So we are basically, you will be performing physics experiments in your own home. 
So, uh, and doing uh, measurements and learning the basics of how to do uh, an experiment, how to test things mathematically. Uh, so we're gonna be giving you the groundwork for that. And basically we've designed some experiments that you can actually do uh, on your desktop. So you won't be doing simulations, computer simulations, at least in physics. Uh, there'll be, it's gonna be a little bit different in chemistry, but I think biology is the same as well, uh, that they're gonna uh, put you through some home exercises uh, that will allow you to uh, hone your scientific skills. Great. So will there be uh, courses uh, or entire programs that will be required to be face-to-face -face that cannot be done uh, online? So other faculties would have, for example, fine arts. You would have to be on campus because it's such a studio-heavy uh, program. Is there a program like that within uh, the science faculty? Yeah, there, there is an animal health technology and respiratory program. Uh, mm -hmm. A couple of their first year courses uh, will be face to face and a couple of them in an alternate delivery uh, because uh, these courses are very hands on and uh, they need some face to face options as well. So respiratory therapy is the only one that will have some on campus required and courses. The, and the animal health technology program. Animal health technology. Very well, okay, uh, let's see. Let me just move down the uh, list of questions here. Uh, if I have selected the water and wastewater technology program, uh, the diploma option is my program conducted online. So I guess in this case, that would be a yes. Yes. Terrific. Uh, let me see. Uh, so uh, next one here, uh, will uh, choosing online uh, slash virtual classes make any difference in our studies or any other future thing? Um, so if I could just start out here. Uh, so the Canadian government has uh, given, uh, has added some leeway when it comes to doing online classes and getting your post-graduation work permit uh, when you're done. So I imagine that's one of the things you're thinking about. And uh, during uh, COVID that uh, online learning will not affect uh, your study permit, but is there anything else that you guys can see where this will uh, affect the student? Uh, Kritika, no, I, no, we're going to, everything is going to transfer smoothly. So there'll be no difference between taking the course face-to-face uh, -face versus the virtual uh, delivery in terms of credits, in terms of using that course in other studies, or even going to different universities within British Columbia, it'll all be transferable. Great. So not nothing really that is gonna that's gonna be changing uh, for the student there. Um, uh, let me see the next question I have here. Uh, lab components uh, regarding computer science from Sanskar. Uh, so sounds like that will be conducted entirely uh, from home and uh, yes I, I, I can jump into that so yes so we will uh, we will do it virtually and I think it's it, it would be much easier to conduct it virtually because we can share the screen we can show everything that we are doing uh, and the student can follow easily in a virtual virtual mode and the software that they would need we can, we can give them instruction how to install it in their machines, uh, as well as we can basically remote log in and help students to install and show how, uh, uh, how, to, how to run their, their, their software. Yeah, so it would be much smoother than face-to-face uh, -face in the virtual mode. Thank you. Uh, what kind of uh, broadband does a student need to have to be able to uh, to participate? Is there any kind of requirements that you can say right now is kind of the minimum value? Uh, I think I think if if they have a uh, just simple uh, basic internet connection, that would work because if they can have a video or audio uh, communication, uh, or or if they can view a video. So that kind of bandwidth would be more than enough for conducting these courses. Okay, so if they're able to watch a YouTube video, they're probably exactly. good to go. They're good to go. Uh, thank you. Anybody else wanna, wanna follow up on that? Let me see what we got next here. Uh, 
Uh, we do have get a number of visa questions here, so this is not quite the uh, quite the right forum for it. But uh, please do reach out to welcome at tiu.ca with those kind of questions. Um, so one here, I guess, uh, that's pretty relevant. Can you explain how master programs like environmental science, which is thesis based, will be conducted uh, virtually? So I guess somewhere where there's substantial uh, research related uh, classes, so how, how will that be done online? Well, I think uh, like uh, because in the first year, you still need to finish the coursework. So we are hoping that uh, the fall term will be, you'll be completing the coursework, which is uh, virtual and online. Uh, but later on, you will be connecting with your supervisors and uh, they will be de defining your research plan. And uh, we are working on uh, currently to ensure that the students may get some opportunity later on, not in this fall, but later on when they move into their thesis domain. Uh, to work uh, face to face in their lab, do the experiments, collect the data, uh, and then and then proceed further with their thesis. So these details will definitely comes up, and uh, we are also hopeful that uh, the scenario might be changed after six months, after fall. So all the decisions will be based on how the things comes up in in the near future as well. But definitely in those thesis based programs, the students will have eventually an opportunity to work uh, with the certain guidelines of health and safety in the lab, uh, uh, but in a later part of their, their program. Terrific. Uh, anybody else who, uh, who, who knows of any kind of research that's, that's been impacted there, but that can't be happening kind of throughout the first year, or is it mostly uh, as you get into the program a little bit further? Yeah. So. Um... The, the first uh, semester, even for the master's students, are courses. So I don't think it, it would impact much because they have to take some of the courses and complete uh, the first year courses. And then the actual research work would start typically after one year, but after at least after one semester. So the supervisors are, are, are well aware and they would definitely help or, or connect with the student and uh, basically decide how they would conduct the research. In, in, in terms of computer science, we can do it remotely, but in other areas where you require some sort of uh, data collection and going into physical field work, uh, they would definitely uh, conduct face-to-face uh, -to -face or one-to-one -one communication with the student and come up with a better solution that would work in this scenario. Thank you. Very well. Okay, uh, I have a question here from Barry Smith uh, regarding horticulture. I don't remember if that's a program that falls under you guys or if that is trade and technology and whether or not that will be online. Rahim, is that a trades program, uh, horticulture? Um, I, Mark, I, I think that that's right. Yes, yeah. so. But like, uh, uh, like certainly if we can leave this question unanswered, and I don't want to give any any kind of an answer sure. which may not be true. Uh, so we will get back to that question. Yes, Barry, uh, I'll reach out to you uh, once we're done here and, and give you an update on, uh, on what the horticulture program looks like. Um, the next question here, how many hours of classes per week can we uh, expect for the MS Master of Science, Environmental Science, I imagine? Uh, I think, uh, to be very honest, the one thing is that we're going to be running a a master's of data science program and the master's of, uh, I believe the environmental science program, this uh, this kind of forum later on. Uh, uh, right, yes. Yeah, so, but uh, I, I don't exactly know, right on the top of my mind, okay. I don't know the number of courses, uh, but there are, uh, like in the data science, I, I know that there are four or five courses that they need to take as a, uh, as a part of their coursework and, and, and same as the environmental science. Uh, but I think when we move into that uh, discussion later on, then uh, we'll be able to provide more information on that. Perfect. But as, but as far as the environmental program courses are concerned, in the fall, they are on the virtual and online. So we have a, a question here from uh, Arta, and she will, uh, I'll turn her mic on, and she can, um, she can ask us herself. Arta? Hello, sir. Yes, hi. 
Hello, sir. Uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm uh, mainly concerned about one small aspect about the virtual learning. Uh, usually when a student is in a university, they also take on volunteer service and jobs separately to be able to gain experience. What will TRU do to provide students with experience outside of virtual classes so they will be able to gain a job outside of uh, uh, after college? Thank you for that question. Great question. What could we do uh, at this moment to, uh, to get that kind of experience? I don't know who, is, uh, who wants to jump in on this one. Um, I think, I, did, I think uh, like, uh, to be very honest, like, uh, uh, we all have to understand that uh, because of this current situation, a lot of processes has been tailored, or I can say that a lot of processes has been uh, put on hold. Uh, kind of scenario because of the health and safety issues. And, uh, and particularly to this question, I believe this falls in the same domain. Uh, although there might be some opportunities uh, which are available, but not in a, in a kind of a, a larger length. And, uh, and we are all hoping to get the things normalized as soon as possible so that students can have that experience as well. Uh, but again, like uh, the health and safety risk associated with that is our top priorities and we don't want any students, who, especially when they are staying away from their home and they get involved into those uh, safety risk and issues. And uh, so we want to ensure that uh, they don't expose to those kind of health and safety risk. So that's why we, are, we might be postponing all those kind of activities to a later stage uh, when the right time comes. Uh, if I could, if I could jump in here, Arda, that's a really excellent question. A couple of things that we have going, of course, is uh, co-op, uh, co-op courses in software engineering and computer science. And I know that right now uh, some of our software engineering uh, students are on a co-op term through this year, and I think they've managed to find work through uh, because it's sort of software design they've managed to find work through this type of interaction. And as I mentioned before, a lot of these sorts of jobs are going to this virtual kind of connection anyway. So I think this is, gonna, this is a really opportune time to take up these skills of learning uh, through these virtual deliveries, because in the end, uh, like we know that, that people in Canada are working with people in Malaysia or Africa and developing software and, and it's it's working. I mean, we we know that that all of these things are, are no longer, you know, you're not having some big software being created just in Kamloops. It's a multinational situation, and I, I think this is a great opportunity for students to to learn some of these really basic skills of talking about things through uh, Zoom, through working through online a team kind of a software. And I think that's all going to come bubble up here, and it's going to be it's going to be a great opportunity for you. That's a great question. Um, can I just add to that that yes. uh, computer science and as, as Mark mentioned, software engineering, they have built-in co-op in their program. So uh, the the co-op part starts after second year. So once you finish the basic knowledge about first first year and second year, then you have opportunity to apply for co-op and and go for even a work in one term second term and maximum one year, three terms, and get uh, real life experience uh, uh, in, in this field. So it's inbuilt with the program. Uh, once you have that skill set developed, you can apply for that. And you will, uh, many of our students actually uh, get a good opportunity uh, through co-op. Thank yes. you. Yes, please, Fahim. And I just want to excuse myself. I have to leave for another meeting. <laughs> it's been it's been very nice talking to all of you, and uh, I wish you all the best. And we really look forward to seeing you in our classes in the coming fall. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Fahim. Bye, Fahim. Bye, Bye Fahim. So uh, one question I see I saw pop up here in the in the chat, and something uh, Mark touched on a little bit earlier is how do we do these lab components from home? Can you can I 
can we get a little bit more of a description of how that works? Uh, the question that I saw in particular was for software engineering. So that might be a little more straightforward, but uh, how do you not blow up your kitchen with that uh, physics experiment or chemistry, I guess, which is more relevant? Uh, okay, so I'm, I'm gonna assume the software engineering question is about first year. So first year mm -hmm. uh, is going to be, uh, let's see, the main labs you're gonna be taking. You're gonna be taking the physics lab, you're gonna be taking the chemistry lab, there will be a software uh, component as well, maybe a couple. And so the physics lab, we have, we have sorted out. We will uh, get you be, to be doing experiments at your own home and using, uh, using uh, basically the tools of science to test your results. Uh, chemistry, I think, is going to also be a little bit of um, some simulation. It also might be doing some work at home, but we'll make sure that the chemicals are safe and no one will blow anything up. Although, <laughs> although you know, I think it should be interesting to have a little danger in there. <laughs> uh, and so then the, and the software one will be the, um, will be uh, of course delivered uh, uh, virtually as well. So we have a project-based lab as well in the second term. And you know, we're still sort of wondering uh, about that ourselves. But it's likely going to be, uh, I, I'm going to assume that it's going to be virtual uh, delivery. And what will happen is we will set you up in Teams. The Teams will be using uh, Teams software to complete their project. And I think what it will be, it will be mostly a design project. So we might ask you to design a robot. Well, if we do that, you can do things in AutoCAD to design the chassis. You can do things in software to design the software to run the, uh, to run the robot. And, and, and that software can be tested online. Uh, so that's very straightforward. And then there would be some electronic components as well, but there's also simulations online that we can use for you to test that whole thing. So I think that, that um, course, that particular software engineering course in the second term where it's a big project, students are working on. I think that'll basically be uh, a virtual delivery. But again, you know, some of these kits are available, uh, you know, essentially through Amazon, through around the whole world. And so there may be some small amount that you will have to uh, get your hands on. And so you can work on it. So, so that'll, that'll be an interesting uh, to see how that turns out. But I think the, the basic labs are going to be covered and there'll be a combination of simulations, uh, work at home, uh, sort of uh, activities. Terrific. Well, so they don't need to go out and hike their home insurance, I guess, at this I, moment. I don't know. They shouldn't. They shouldn't need to do that. Although okay, we will, you know, they might need some safety glasses because working with chemicals, you want to be safe. Even if they're safe chemicals, it's a good, uh, you want to make sure you are following the proper procedures. Keeping you safe is important. Yep. Got it. Thank you. Musfik, do you have anything to, uh, to follow up there? No, I think, I think Mark, uh, Mark touched, touched every uh, aspect. Uh, for software engineering or computer science, uh, taking a lab is much, much easier because uh, we can easily do it virtually and install software. Do, uh, for example, if we have mobile application development, you can use the emulator to test your application act before uh, running it to a real device. So there are lots of ways that uh, we can show students how they can do it uh, virtually. So I don't think we will have any issue in the, in the first or second semester running this course virtually and conducting the lab. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you very much. So we just uh, rounded the first the hour here. So we will start to wrap it up. Uh, and one more question I get here is, uh, can I get a recording of this meeting? And yes, it is uh, being recorded. And we will share it so you can rewatch it or, or, or share with whoever else might be uh, interested. So uh, before we, we wrap it up, do you guys have any uh, final uh, message here before uh, we, uh, we finish up the session? Yeah, I have, I have a final message. We, we know that this term is going to be different. But one of the things that's not going to be different is uh, how our professors care about their students. And one of the things that, that I need you to do if you come here is I need you to reach out to me and I need you to come to my office hours. You're not bothering me, all right? That's what I'm there for. I need you to tell me about yourself. I need you to um, basically take all, advantage of all of those opportunities because uh, it's, it's, uh, that's what I'm here for. I'm here to help you uh, learn and get through the courses uh, and find out what you love. So. Um, 
that would be my message to you. Make sure you reach out to your professors. And if there's any troubles at all, we will do whatever we can to help you through them. Thank you. Um, I have a similar message that uh, I think this is a very exciting time to start your uh, semester, although it's, it's, it's different as Mark mentioned, but it is also uh, exciting and you will learn different skill sets uh, by uh, starting the, the semester at this, uh, at this time. And um, uh, we are always here uh, to help and our professors are going extra mile to make you make things much easier and so that you don't feel any difference that you are, you are taking these courses virtually. So hopefully it would be a very exciting experience for you. And we have already gained some experience by taking uh, uh, virtual classes in the fall and, and last summer. So we are well prepared. We have all the tools required to support you the utmost level that we can provide. And we are uh, eagerly waiting for you to start this semester. Thank you. Thank you. I'm just uh, getting a message here that we have one last question coming in here. So I'm just going to turn on a, a last question here uh, from Olaye uh, Moses. Uh, please let us ha have your question before we wrap it up here. Hello, Olaye. I want to ask hi. about hello. Yes, hi. Uh, I want to ask about in the beginning of my registration, I choose a bachelor of science as general, mm -hmm. and I'm asking, I'm I want to change it to de de dentries. Can I change it to another course relevant to science? Maybe chemistry or dentistry or other uh, other courses. Yep. So I, I can answer that question. Thank, thank you. That's thank you. a very good question. So the way dentistry and professional uh, programs work is they want you to study uh, for about three years before you apply. So if you are interested in dentistry, then what you would do is you would choose a science background for about three years. And then you would, uh, there's a, there's a application process to get into dentistry or medical school or pharmacy um, and so then basically after three years of stay, so studying, let's say chemistry or physics, you should study physics, I love physics, uh, then you would go through the process of, of, trying, of applying for dentistry school. Yeah, just uh, uh, just to, to add something that if you want to uh, change a program within TRU and within science, you can easily do that after completing your first semester as well because it's uh, the first semester is typically you need to take a, a set uh, courses and that are pretty common uh, for pretty much all the programs that we offer in science. So after taking first semester, you think, oh, I want to do a diploma in computer science instead of software engineering. You can easily change to that. Or if I, if I want to do uh, some um, pure science program, then you can easily uh, change to that and that you have those kind of options within science to change it. And you can do that anytime, so you don't have to worry at this time. Terrific. Thank you very much. That was, that was, that was great, great, great question. Um, so I think before we wrap up here, I think my last uh, message to everybody is please uh, read your emails. There is a ton of stuff going out right now and in the next couple of months here from your international student advisor, your advising team, faculty, uh, the international marketing team. So please do keep an eye on all that great information uh, going out. And as I mentioned, uh, we will have a lot of support services in place for you uh, come September. So please do take advantage uh, of all of those. Uh, you can check out uh, tru.ca slash COVID-19. That is the university's main page and uh, there's regular updates regarding the COVID situation. So please do keep an eye on that and please do keep an eye on uh, all of the emails going out. Uh, there will be a, a survey uh, going out uh, tomorrow from the marketing team. Uh, please do uh, fill out that survey. So we have a little bit more information uh, to go on uh, when it comes to uh, planning for you guys coming in in September. So that will be uh, coming out uh, tomorrow. 
So if there's nothing else, I would like to say uh, thank you to Mark, uh, Musfiq, and uh, Fahim for participating today. It was very informative. Uh, and uh, I'm sure all students look forward to, to seeing you guys in September. If uh, any stu students have, uh, did we, is it over? Uh, please, no, no, we're still going, Mark. Please go ahead. <laughs> okay, good. If you have any other students, please reach out to the chairs of your department. I see there's a question here about respiratory therapy. The chairs will answer all of those questions. And uh, please contact us. Where can you find our information? If you go to the TRU webpage and just do a search for physics or respiratory therapy, you should find the, uh, the, the links that you need. Um, and I'm sure if you contact anyone at TRU World, they would be more than happy to connect you to who you need to uh, ask questions of. Please reach out for us because uh, yeah, we're here to, to help you for sure. So the main uh, TRU World website uh, pay, uh, email, sorry, would be welcome at tru.ca. So that's welcome at tru.ca. Thank you. And at the end, we would like to welcome you all to the fall semester. Thank you. Hello, I'm Marco Lucetti. I'm the 2019 valedictorian for the Faculty of Science. I'm graduating from the Bachelor of Computing Science program. It was always an area of interest of mine. Um, I had some other things I considered, but definitely there was good, strong job prospects in computing science, something I care and am passionate about, so it was a really good match. I think I've always had a lifelong love of learning. I've always liked learning. I've always meant to go to university. Um, I have an interest within the field of computing science in the area of full stack development as well as machine learning, which has been what I focused on throughout my degree. I'm hoping that the degree can help me kickstart the career in that area. I think the entire Department of Computing Science faculty has been extremely supportive of both my goals within the program, of exactly what I was interested in. Uh, for instance, all the projects that are part of Classworks, I've always been able to tailor that to my particular area of interest. I was given the opportunity of being a teaching assistant, so, uh, of being a research assistant in very different fields with very different faculty members. There's always been great support from everyone. I've been very fortunate in terms of research opportunities, particularly at TRU, um, and other opportunities that the faculty has um, provided. Even in my second term, I was able to become an undergraduate teaching assistant, so it started there, and then I've just had an amazing opportunity. I'm currently working as a research assistant in the area of uh, generative adversarial neural networks. So we're doing some research generating uh, fake patient's data that can be used without the restrictions of real patient data, so you could do research in that area. I think people don't realize the amount of opportunity that's here. Um, I can speak for the sciences, but everybody I know that wants to has a research position. They're doing research on what they want. There's an enormous amount of opportunity. I don't think you could get there anywhere else. The absolute best part has been, for me, has been my involvement with the Computing Science Club. I was given the opportunity of teaching workshops, organizing workshops, and attending them as a board member. And I was able to put on the workshops on the topic I cared about that I thought other people might be interested. It's been generally a fantastic experience that way. Uh, long term, I really would like to be yeah, a full stack developer or an engineering lead. Um, and I really would like to have, take all opportunities I have to kind of share back. That's been one of the highlights of my time here at TRU.